Hello students. Welcome to the course Deep Learning. I myself Shah Jahan Abu Bakr, Department of CSE AIML, KT's College of Engineering, Kolhapur. In the last lecture, we have discussed about artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. And we have seen the biological neuron, how a artificial neuron look like, how we formed an artificial neural network and all that. And we have seen the example of housing price prediction also. In this lesson, we are uh, going to see the functions in artificial neural network. So the main function what we are going to see in this lesson is activation function. See here, consider an example of binary classification. For example, we want to see whether the given picture is a dog or not. So what we'll do, we will take an image of a dog, then we'll pass through the model. If the model predicts 1, then it is a dog. If it predicts as 0, it is not a dog. Okay, so to train this model, we have to give the input image also. The input image will be given as a feature vector. See, for example, our image is of size 64 cross 64. So, it contains 64 into 64 pixel values. What is a pixel? Pixel is the smallest unit of image. Picture element, which is called pixel. So, if it's a color image, each point will have three values, a red value, a green value, and a blue value. You can see uh, here in this figure, uh, the image is represented as a red color, green color, and a blue color. So every pixel have a red value, a green value, and a blue value. So the red value is ranges from 0 to 255. Similarly, the green as well as the blue. So, for example, you have a white pixel in your image, what will be the color? It will be 255 R, 255 green and 255 blue. If you have a black pixel, then it is 0, 0, 0. If you have a green pixel, then the value is 0, 255, 0. Similarly, if you have a blue pixel, the value will be 0, 0, 255. Okay, so we can see here if it's a 64 to 64 image, it has got three channels RGB. So total number of pixels is 64 into 64 into 3, which is 12,288 elements. So when we uh, write that elements in a one column, we'll get a one column vector with uh, one 12,288 elements. This is called a input feature vector that feature vector will pass through the model okay so we'll uh, discuss about some notations here so we have discussed one input feature the input is a vector which is x and what is output output is a class which is either one which means a dog or zero which is not a dog so y can take only two values either zero or one but x is a input feature vector of n dimension in the last case it was 12200 and something Okay, suppose we have more than one images as training samples, suppose we have n m training samples, then we have a pair of x and y's. So x1, y1 is the first image, input feature vector x and output y, similarly x2, y2, x3, y3, etc. So when we write that as a matrix, x is a uh, matrix which has every column is an input feature vector. So the first column is the feature vector first image, second column is the feature vector of second image, such the last column is the feature vector of mth image. Similarly, y will have m columns, but there is no row because y can take only two values, either 1 or 0. So y is a uh, matrix of size 1 cross m. And when we pass the input feature vector x is passed through the model we get a prediction y cap we have told x is the input feature vector and y is the output what is y cap y cap is nothing but the prediction how the y cap is calculated it is w transpose x plus b where x is the input feature vector w is the weight matrix we have taken the transpose of that and there is an addition of a 
constant which is called a bias or a DC value. That's what we have seen for a linear regression problem. For a logistic regression problem, which is nothing but a classification problem, we have to introduce a non-linearity. So, y cap is equal to sigma of w transpose x plus b, where sigma is an activation function, which introduced non-linearity. So, we will talk about what is an activation function. So, you can see here in the right image, which is a neuron we have discussed in the last class, the neuron will get inputs like x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, which are input feature vector, which is multiplied with w1, w2, w3, w4 and w5, which are weights. These are multiplied and added up. Once it is added up, we we'll pass through the activation function, which is introducing a non-linearity and pass through the other neurons. So, what is the job of this activation function? It introduces non-linearity to the output of a neuron. Without this activation function, a neural network is same as a linear regression model, which is very linear. There is no non-linearity. So, introducing non-linearity, we can do a complex task. Okay. So, if we have only linearity, then the combination of two linear functions or again a linear function only, then there is no point in having more number of hidden layers because every hidden layer, if it is introducing only linearity, it is as if you have a only single layer. Okay. So, we will come to that. So, we have different uh, activation functions like linear, sigmoid, tan h, relu, leaky, leru, softmax, etc. So, what is a linear activation function? So, a linear activation function is a simple function which is not introducing any non-linearity. So, the function is f of x is equal to x, which means if input is x, output is also x. If input is 5, output is 5. So, the derivative of f of x is f dash x is equal to 1. So, this is generally used at the uh, output layer. It is an activation function at the output layer, not in the hidden layers. And this is mainly done only in the linear regression problem because it is not introducing any non-linearity. Okay. So, uh, this is a question for you. You can pause your video and uh, just think about it two seconds. When the activation function is linear, we are introducing linear as activation function the hidden layers. What will happen if we have more than two or n number of hidden layers? You have more than two number of hidden layers. For example, you have five hidden layers. The every hidden layers of the activation function, linear activation function. What will happen? Just you can think about that. Yes, you are right. It is the all the layers is nothing but becomes a single layer because linear combination of the linear function is a, again a linear. So, it is the all n layers could basically be squashed into a single layer. So, there is no point in adding multiple number of hidden layer if the activation function is linear. Now, next one is sigmoid or logistic activation function. You can see the function equation is f of x is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus x. You can see the curve here. It looks like a S curve. So, input is the x axis and output is the y axis. You can see the output value is from 0 to 1. So, whatever the input value which is between minus infinity and infinity, it will be converted to 0 and 1. So, this kind of activation function is useful when we have a prediction of a probability value. You know what is the probability value? So, value lies it is between 0 and 1. So, this is normally used at the uh, output layer. Okay. So, this is the mainly this activation function used for classifier because we want the output as a probability value there. So, sigmoid you can see the uh, derivative of sigmoid function there f dash x is equal to f of x into 1 minus f of x. You can see from the graph the height of the derivation is very small. So, it means that gradient will vanish after some time. What is a gradient that we will uh, discuss in the coming classes. Now, just uh, imagine the, uh, the derivative height is very small. So, the value will be diminished and finally, it becomes 0 after some times. So, sigmoid saturates and kills the gradient. So, the network will learn very slowly. 
here you can give some different value and check the output. For example, x is a very large number, x is equal to infinity. What is e raised to minus infinity? 0. So, 1 by 1 is 1. So, when input is very large number, output is 1. So, now we can uh, give a minus infinity, very small number. So, e raised to minus of minus infinity is e raised to infinity, which is infinity, 1 by infinity is 0. Yes, output is 0. And you can give a middle value x equal to 0. So, 1 by 1 plus e raised to 0, e raised to 0 is 1. So, 1 by 2, which is 0.5. You can see from the graph. Next activation function is soft mass activation function. So, whatever we have seen the sigmoid activation mainly work for a, a binary classification. If you have more than one class, which is called multi-class model, where we need a output will be different classes. Sum of all the uh, output should be 1, means the probability, total probability is 1. So, in that case, we use soft mass function. The equation is f of x equal to e to the power x i divided by summation j e raised to x j. Okay. So, the difference is sigmoid is for binary classification, softmax is for uh, multi-class problem. Next activation function is tan h. So, tan h is mainly meant for, uh, it is similar to sigmoid function. The only difference is sigmoid function you can see from the graph, it is from 0 to 1, but for tan h, it is from minus 1 to plus 1. So, this activation function have a larger derivative compared to the sigmoid. So, here we have a less vanishing gradient. So, whenever you use a sigmoid, if you use a tan h, the vanishing gradient problem will be solved. But this cannot be used as an output activation function because the output is not a, should be a probability value in case of a classification task, but minus 1 to 1 is not a probability value. Probability value is only from 0 to 1. Now, just think this, uh, you can pause the video and think about this, which activation function we can use when we want output as a probability values? Is it linear, is a sigmoid or a tan h or tan h and sigmoid? Tell me. Yes, it is sigmoid because for a linear, the output is minus infinity to infinity. For sigmoid, it is from 0 to 1. For tan h, it is minus 1 to 1. So, the correct answer is sigmoid. Next activation function is ReLU. ReLU means rectified linear unit. What here is happening is whenever there is a negative number which will be output as 0 and positive number will keep as it is. You can see the function there f of x equal to 0 when x is less than 0 and f of x is equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0. So, what is f dash x? the derivative which is 0 for x less than 0 and it is 1 for x greater than 0. So, this is the most commonly used activation function in the deep learning model. So, this kind of activation function is used in the hidden layers. So, whenever there is a negative number which will be converted to 0, whenever the positive number is there, it will cap, uh, keep as it is. The function can be written like this also f of x is equal to maximum of 0 and x. So, this will solve the lot of vanishing gradient problems which is there in the sigmoid and tan h function. Okay. So, this is computerly, computationally economical compared to the sigmoid and tan x function will be very faster, but there is a small problem here. Whenever there is a large negative numbers everywhere, so everything will be converted back to 0. So, there is a chance that the neuron will die that is called dead neuron. So, further uh, improvement or training will not happen. So, the gradient will die. So, to solve this, we have another kind of version of ReLU which is called leaky ReLU. The leaky ReLU will solve that problem. What is leaky ReLU? Instead of 0 for the negative number, we will have a very small slope. So, you can see the function there f of y is equal to a y when y less than 0. In a ReLU case, it was less than uh, when y is less than 0, it was 0. Here it is a into y. a will be a very small number like 0 0.01. Still, there will be a uh, value. It is not 0. So, this will have the same performance like ReLU. The only difference is it will solve the problem of dead neuron. The neuron will not die because it is not making it 0. Still, there is a small value will be there. So, summary, uh, we have studied activation function. The main purpose of activation function is to introduce non-linearity. So, ReLU is the 
most useful activation function which is used in the uh, hidden layers then uh, output layer if it is a regression problem we use a linear layer linear activation function and uh, for a uh, classification problem it's a binary then we use a sigmoid function if it is a multi-class problem then we use a uh, softmax a leaky relu will solve the problem of uh, dead neuron okay thank you